Converting email messages into PDF files can be a very useful capability, and both Microsoft Office Outlook and Lotus Notes have the PDF Maker installed by default. Again, I'm sorry for the Mac users, but this feature is Windows only. We're going to review the capabilities in this video using Microsoft Outlook, but Lotus Notes capabilities are quite similar. If we open an email and want to convert this email into a PDF file, and notice that this email includes text and graphics, we can go straight to the Adobe PDF tab in the ribbon and click Convert to PDF. It will ask us for a file name, and we'll save this straight to the desktop. When we click Save, it makes the conversion. And once the conversion is complete, by default, Acrobat is launched and we'll be able to see the results here. We can see the email header at the top, and we can see the text of the mail. As we scroll through the mail, we find that the pictures and the images are missing, and they're replaced by this small blue icon with a question mark. Now why is that, and how can we fix that? If we go back to Outlook, notice that there are no options in the PDF toolbar here within the mail message. In order to change the settings, we'll need to go back to the Outlook main window and choose the Adobe PDF tab there. We have here more options, including Change Conversion Settings. Now in this case, when we click on Change Conversion Settings, we have a host of conversion options available to us. We can choose the compatibility. If you're creating this for your own use as an archive, you'll most likely want to maintain the highest version number with the greatest feature set but if you're sharing with others, you may need to make some compromises here. Next, you can decide whether or not to include attachments in the Adobe PDF. If you include attachments, they're embedded in the document and available in the Attachments panel, as we saw in the videos on converting Microsoft Office documents. Do you want to launch Acrobat after conversion? This option controls that. If we turn it off, Acrobat is not launched by default, but you may want to leave this turned on. Next, we can choose whether to output an Adobe PDF portfolio when creating a file. We'll cover PDF portfolios in great detail in some future videos, but we'll see a good use for this in a few moments. For converting single email messages, we'll leave this turned off for now. Finally, down here, we have block download of external content. This is the reason we see the blue icons with the question marks in our PDF file. This option prevents the pictures from being downloaded, and unchecking it will allow the images to be retrieved from the web. This can be a security risk, and that's why it's turned on by default. You'll have to be careful if you turn this off. We'll go ahead and leave this unchecked for now, since I know where the mail is coming from in this exercise. We can click on OK and go back to our document, and then we can click once again, on Convert to Adobe PDF. This time, we'll overwrite the file, and once the conversion is complete, we can see that we have the images rather than the blue question mark icon because we turned off block downloaded content in the preferences. At this point, we've converted a single message to PDF, but we also have the ability to convert multiple messages at once. If we go to this folder, and we multi-select more than one message by using the control key and clicking multiple messages. Now we can go to selected messages, create new PDF, and it creates a file from the selected messages. Again, we'll choose the desktop and click save. And here's our PDF. We can scroll through and see that we have each message on a separate page continuously throughout the file but there's a better way for multiple messages. If we go back into Change Conversion Settings and we enable the option to output Adobe PDF Portfolio, we'll find an enhanced view. This time, when we choose Selected Messages and Create New PDF, again, we'll overwrite the existing file. And now we can see the PDF created as a portfolio. The individual messages are listed here at the top, and clicking on any one opens that message in the window underneath. We'll explore PDF portfolios in great detail in a future video, but you can see the potential here. 
The third thing we can do is we can actually select a folder and create a PDF from the entire selected folder. If we go to the top here and choose Selected Folder, Create New PDF, it gives us a selection box to choose the folders with the current folder already selected. We can choose additional folders by clicking in the boxes. And note that we can include subfolders by clicking in this box. When we click on OK, it asks us again for the location of the file and once more we'll overwrite the previous version. Now Acrobat runs through the messages, creating a combined PDF portfolio containing all the messages. Again, we can click any one of these messages and we can see the message in the window below. And in fact, we can even launch the PDF separately by clicking Open File here on the right hand side. We have yet another capability within PDF Maker for Microsoft Outlook. We can use Acrobat as an automatic archival tool for our email. Back on the Adobe PDF tab up in the ribbon, we'll click on Set Up Automatic Archival. The first thing to do is to enable the automatic archival setting. We can choose to run our archival process on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. And we can set up a variety of scheduling options, including the time of day that we want the archive to run. Down at the bottom, we can click on Add, and we get a folder list similar to the one we saw for creating a PDF from a selected folder. We can choose here the folders that we want to archive, and the current folder is selected by default. When we click OK, we're asked for the name of the archive file. And in this case, we'll call this Layers Archive. And we'll click on Open. And now we can see that Layers Archive has been added to the list. We can add more entries to the list if we want. And we can remove entries from the list as well by clicking on them and then selecting Delete. Once we've got our folders added to the list, we can close this dialog and let it run automatically but we can also choose to run archival now. This will process all the folders in the list, appending the mail to the file that we specified. This is a nice way to archive off your mail for safekeeping. Once the archival is complete, we can go to the desktop and we can open the layers archive and see that the messages have all been included. Running this again later, either manually or automatically, will append to the PDF file. And there you have PDF Maker within Microsoft Outlook. Create a PDF file from a single message, from a group of messages, or from an entire folder or set of folders. Auto-archive your mail to create backups. A very nice set of capabilities for working with mail using Adobe Acrobat 11.